tell you a story real quick. I'm in the middle of a, I'm in the middle of a story. So he said how COVID and like being in those shut down and he was on sabbatical for a year and how it just like changed all of his, like, um, uh, just how he interacts with his socialization. And I said, I know. He said, I have like, I don't have a filter anymore. And he goes, you had a filter? (laughs) (laughs) Good point. Good point. Like, oh my God. He goes, I should have said it. It was just like. He goes, is this like Julie 2.0? And I said, yes, it is. <laughs> it's even less of a filter if there, if there was whatever it was there before is now gone. It is now gone. <laughs> I do though. I have this like, it just, there's no, it just goes from here to here. It's like, comes right out. Well, then we'll see what today holds. What today holds. So at midnight, let's say for everybody who's listening or who cares, um, <laughs> woke up. It, it would have been, it would be midnight our time that I woke up last night. I hate it. Was I hate, yeah. Two in the morning, Chicago time. Because we had a three o'clock car come to get us to take us to the airport. For like a five o'clock flight or for something? For a five o'clock flight. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... It wasn't as dreadful at the time as I thought it was going to be. I thought I was just going to be a living nightmare, um, but it wasn't. It wasn't exactly. It wasn't actually horrible. Maybe tomorrow you'll. It'll be worse. To- it'll hit you tomorrow. I think tomorrow might be worse. I'll be like a zombie tomorrow. <laughs> but um, hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Did you guys have a good Thanksgiving? Yeah. Yeah. Amanda, were you just? No. Were you here? Were you here, Tom? Were you here just in California? No, I was in the Midwest. Also, I was. Oh. In- Long story, I won't tell the whole story, but okay. um, meeting, uh, so I went with my daughter, Stella, to St. Louis, Right. and Dylan was going to, in Iowa City, was going to meet us in St. Louis, but he had the flu in Iowa City. Diagnosed, like tested, he had the flu. Not COVID, but the flu. Right. So no one wanted him to come to Thanksgiving in St. Poor Louis. Poor guy. But I know. So I, I drove up to Iowa City on Thanksgiving Day stayed overnight and came back so it worked it, everything worked out it was where people were meant to be i think in right. a way, but right uh, it was a little very crazy. good yeah it's yeah. kind of those things though that you just especially when your kids start becoming adults you just kind of like go with yeah. the flow on stuff you know yeah 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 well hope everybody out there had a good thanksgiving get some good reading in um Tom, I bought the book that you, I haven't, I didn't read it yet, but I read like the first few pages that it tells about the one that's the, um, the one about the mysterious society ladies. Oh yeah. All right. It seems like it's pretty funny. So. Well, that's I'll, great. You have to report back. We will report back on that one. Okay. <laughs> so um, we have just us, us kids here today, which yeah. is great. We love it when it's a full house and when it's just us kids too. <laughs> so um, Amanda, you, you want to go first? Can you go first? And then Tom? Sure. Okay. Perfect. Off okay. you go. All right. Um, this is a book that Sharon, um, Shannon, pardon me, Shannon, our si- Simon and Schuster rep, uh, sent to me. This is the Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows, and it's from John Koenig, and so he started a blog by this name in. 2009 and this these are this is a dictionary of all made up words for um emotions you'll often see online if you're a word nerd like me there are these lists of single words for complex emotions that don't exist in english like one of my favorites is a german word torschlusspanik which literally translates to gate closing panic. And it's a word for the fear of diminishing possibilities as you age. I think about that one a lot as I grow older. <laughs> so, but then these are all made up words. And um, there's a nice little write up on this book. Have you ever wondered about the lives of each person you pass on the street? realizing that everyone is the main character in their own story, each living a life as vivid and complex as your own. That feeling has a name, Sonder, which is not a real word, but he has made these words up for us for similar emotions. Um, So this is a really lovely little hardcover for 20 bucks. I think it's a great gift for anyone who is a dreamer who thinks about words and language a lot, uh, who writes. And it has um, 
really cool art from a variety of artists throughout it. Um, that a lot of it is collage. You can't really see, but um, it's. I think it's just a great gift. Really strange, dreamlike stuff. Cool. Yeah, so I think it's just a great, great gift for this time of year. We have a nice stack right now. I think I think we're all I think our distributor is already out of it and they're working on a reprint, but we still have a nice stack on the counter at Warwick's. Perfect. So once again, that's the dictionary of obscure sorrows. And that's like a gifty hardcover or yeah, it's like yeah. a little little I think it's yeah. little. Mm-hmm. And 20 bucks, but it's you can see it's sparkly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so and it's like it's a great and it looks like it's just one of those that you can just kind of dip in and out of. You don't have to kind yes. of read it as a as a Yeah, and I think I'm just gonna read a random one. After gloom, the pang of loneliness you feel the day after an intensely social event as the oh, glow man. of voices and laughter fades into a somber quiet <laughs> after gloom. I think I felt after gloom at some point this weekend. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, it's a, that's after a holiday. <laughs> and it's it's not like, you know how some gift books you give it and you're you're kind of like, because you know the person might look at it once and never look at it again. Yeah. This is not that kind of gift book. I think it will continue to be compelling and thought provoking for a long time for people who like to think about words. All right, it sounds very cool. And and when you mentioned the German word, right? That we, I I have to find it. Years ago, we published a collect a, a book. It was a gift book also of all of those German words that only exist. But they just they describe a. I think those were real. Maybe those were made up German words. Actually, <laughs> I have to look it up. Um, German before. German is such a cool language. I I would love to learn because. They are the masters of compound words. Yes, yes. I have to figure out what that book was. Huh. Yeah, let me know. It sounds like it's up your alley for sure. Uh -huh. All right, Tom, you're up. Okay, so this is one where because they don't send us all the books, I got, a lot of times I do have books to hold up and show, but this is one I don't have, but I wish I did because it, I'm sure it's a gorgeous looking book and I haven't seen the finished copy. Oh but all of the marvels by Douglas Wolfe, which is um, he, his history, reading history of the Marvel comic. So he read, it's a half a million pages, uh, 27,000, more than 27,000 Marvel superhero comics. So he read them, you know, in a way, like almost as a literary critic, I think, um, to, 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 to show kind of that they are really our great epic, America's great epic. So I think it started in 1961. See, I'm not a, I'm not a, I didn't start, I've never collected comic books, never read comic yeah. books, but I am kind of fascinated by, by the, by the devotion to the, to them and the, uh, you know, and it, it's only growing, of course. Right. Um, yeah, for sure. So, so he spent five years like pouring over all of these comics from beginning to end and then like kind of explicating them as a, literary critic would do and um and he shows that it's the great american epic he compares it he says it's our real iliad um so if you love if you love comics if you love american history i'm sure through the comics you know he tells the history of the, the from the second half of the 20th century to the present through the comics um it's the perfect it's going to be a great gift book um and then i can i so He's definitely right about it being the Great American Epic because I can. It's already been revealed, so I'm not giving away anything that hasn't already been said. But I'm going to be talking more next year because Penguin Classics is doing has a deal with Marvel to do Marvel comics in Penguin Classic form. Wow! So, yes. So they will. So it's truly like he's onto something. They're going to get the the imprint of the Penguin Classic next summer and it will be official that they are the america they are classics yes it's true we're That's gonna start crazy. With, it's gonna be great we're starting with superman captain america and black panther those are the first three so will they be, be comic done, books well they're books but they're gonna be done in the i guess i haven't seen the format but i think it's an oversized paperback format okay um yeah it's the comics it's the comics okay yeah. wow. with incredible introductions i can't remember who they were but they're famous writers who love, you know, grew up with these things and love them and adore them. Um, 
So we'll do paperbacks in the traditional Black Penguin Classic form, I think. And then we'll do, uh, you know, more gifty, ex more expensive hardcovers next summer that will be collectible. So um, it's going to be very cool. And, you know, when they, for Penguin Classics announced it maybe in October, I think, and the press freaked out. And so there's going to be a lot of attention paid. So um, I imagine that the press freaked out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, anything Marvel is uh, going to make people pay attention. And then you throw in Penguin Classics and Marvels, two, these two things that you think don't belong together. Bring back the Penguin bus. <laughs> Oh yes, <laughs> with the Marvel, yes, with the Marvel characters. Oh, and the I love penguin it. Bus driving. Believe me, if I could, I would bring back the Penguin bus. I love that thing. Um, that would be cool. And then we get it. We'll park in Hollywood somewhere, and maybe some right. of the stars will come out. And so, <laughs> all right, all right. I'm going to suggest it. We, yeah, we, and then, but as long as I don't have to dress up as a superhero. Yeah, no, that's no. not my thing. That's no, not. My thing. No. Um, so back to all of the Marvels. So this is out now. We don't have to wait. Um, Juno Diaz reviewed it on yesterday's front page of the New York Times book review, and he's a real comic book nerd oh, really? in the best sense. Yeah, um, and he called it a brilliant, eccentric, moving, and wholly wonderful attempt to distill to distill it all into a coherent narrative. He ends the review with, "All the Marvels is magnificently marvelous. Wolf's work will invite many more alliterative superlatives. It deserves them all." Oh, there we are. That's it. Yeah, that's it. So um, I think perfect, it's just the perfect time for it to be coming out for that Marvel it's library. It's a great gift. It's a, that is a fantastic gift yeah. for this time of year. Totally. I mean, absolutely fantastic. Okay, I'm just gonna go real quick because I'm a little frazzled today and I wasn't completely prepared. So sorry about that, everybody. Um, but I'm gonna bring back one of my favorites because this is my favorite time of year to recommend this. And if you were here last year, I probably recommended it. So sorry about that if I've already done this. But Mr. Dickens and his Carol, it is time to bring this back out. If you already, if you have it, it's worth a reread. If you don't have it, it's in paperback. I think it just came out in paperback last year. It was actually released, I think, in 2017. And it came out um, in paperback, I think, last year. I love this book. It's the take on, on Charles Dickens, the, the Christmas Carol. Um, and kind of his muse for what the Christmas Carol was. Oh, look who's coming in hot here. We got Kim DeVoe coming in the house. What? Yes. So here comes Kim to rescue us. Just too. in time. Just wow. In time. So um, anyways, back to Mr. Dickens and his Carol. Samantha Silva, I love her books. Um, so this is, for this time of year, it's absolutely fantastic. If you like Samantha Silva though, her um, other book that I absolutely love that just came out this year um, is called Love and Fury. Let's see if I can bring it up here really quickly. And this is about um, Mary, Wollstone, Mary Wollstonecraft and her, um, and her uh, it's told in two different, from two different perspectives from the midwife. This is fantastic. So if you already read Mr. Dickens and his Carol and you want to still read something by Samantha Silva, pick up Love and Fury. Nancy at the store Nancy read it loved and it. loved it. Um, yeah. It's so good. Beth loved it at the store. So um, so, there, so her books are historical novels, but about literary figures. Correct. Awesome. Correct. And, there, and she does just this really great job of just bringing them to life. You I mean, uh, and Mr. Dickens and his Carol can't be real, but it's just like, you really think it is. I mean, she just like puts you in that atmosphere and it's just- uh, oh, that's great. It's, she's really good. So those are my two. And Kim is gonna be next. We either have Kim or we, oh, we do. We got Kim. Hi, Kim. Sorry, sorry. No, I'm glad um, you're here. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah, I'm ready, you I think. go then. Okay, um, I have a theme. Um, I'm doing uh, short stories. Uh, collections. Um, okay, my the multi my first one I'll introduce. It's Dolphin Junction by Mick Herron. Um, The multi award winning Mick Herron is one of my absolute favorite authors. And if he wrote a shopping list, I would happily read it. His latest book, Dolphin Junction, is a collection of nerve wrackingly thrilling mysteries that highlight his dazzling cleverness and his mastery of the craft of writing. 
These stories range from tense and terrifying to dark and witty, and they are full of surprises. If you, like me, like this sort of thing, Heron's twists and sleight of hand will dazzle you. I absolutely love this book and his hugely acclaimed Slow House series. Of, sorry, I have, sorry, sorry. Slow House series um, uh, is to die for also. And as Wade mentioned a while back, this series is being made into an Apple TV Plus series with an all-star cast, including Gary Oldman, Kristen Scott Thomas, and Olivia Cook. Um, I can't recommend this series highly enough, and it would make a great gift for anyone who enjoys John le Carre. And But this is just so good. Then those are the stories. Yeah, these yeah. are the stories. Dolphin right. Junction is the stories. This is just the first of his Slow House series. I will never part with this book. It seems like um, he, he's been growing just organically, like book by book, more and more people find him. It's great. Yeah. My sister, yeah. my sister's a really good reader. And over the weekend, she was saying he's one of her favorite writers, like has read everything. Yeah, so. his, 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 he, the, he's nails it. I mean, every page is full of like, wow, wow, wow. that kind of writer. Wade's, I wait. I don't know if Wade's still watching us or not, but he's on here and he says, Mick Heron. So hello, <laughs> Wade, if you're on here. Yes, we recommend your books even when you don't show up. I remember it. when Wade recommended that book and I, I thought the series would have already been on by now, but I guess it's still coming. Yeah, they got delayed because of the virus and stuff, but I, um, I keep checking and I don't have a date yet. I don't know yet. Yeah. Um, and then a couple other comments. Yes, um, and we're getting some appreciation for showing up on the random Monday here. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> we're, all, we're all a little random, I think, today. <laughs> getting us back into the reading routine for the holidays. Keep going through the holiday season here. And then Sarita, I don't know if you're watching or not, but you emailed me earlier today and I will email you back um, and I will reach out to, um, I think it was... Uh, you were looking about asking about if we could get um oh what's his name here craig foster so um i will look into that because it looks like his book just came out this month so we'll reach out to his publisher see what we can put together there anyways with that back to you amanda well i want to answer beth's question about so beth is Thinking of trying to compile a list of all the wrecks from the reps over the last year to see which ones she's read. And I, so I don't have that all in one spot. We do put the book lists on our website under the events calendar. Um, so on, on the day that we have the tea times, there are the lists for those days. And that should go back through May of last year. Um, yeah, I don't know that there's a quick way of doing it. I have it. to think about it, Beth. I want, I want to, I definitely want to help. That would be awesome. So yeah. well, we'll, me, we'll, we'll put our heads together and see if we can come up with a way Let me that, think on it. Yeah. There might be a way for me to export them all into one spreadsheet or something. So yeah, yeah. I like that. I'd, I'd love that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then um, we still have to do. Serena's asking when we when we're going to do the um, our all time favorites of all time. So that's wow. a, that we do need to we do need to pick a date to do that, Serena. Um, that's going to be a tough one. It's hard enough to pick a book that's like our favorite of just this year, right? But doing our favorites of like ever. I was just I was just talking about one of mine before because I get I'm being a, I, I hear that my picks are little dark these days um and so <laughs> it wasn't always the case. Well, I, that's what i thought i thought i've always been a little on the dark side and i said because perfume by patrick suskin is absolutely my favorite book of all oh, time. i love that book too I I such a good book. book it is an absolutely my favorite book of all time um i think you know i won't give away did, the ending did you see the movie yeah but it was kind of weird okay yeah i didn't i i didn't really particularly care for the movie the book well, is and the translation yeah. you got it because there's a couple different translations that are out there oh um, i didn't know that i remember yeah. loving loving that book i'd love to revisit it i know yeah. it's kind of it just has it's just like oh 
It's dark. Right. Okay. And, and I was going to I was going to say it also that um I just saw that the New York Times not well they're picking their favorite books of the year tomorrow. Ooh. But also they're picking or I guess people are voting for their favorite books of the last 125 years. Did you see that? They put oh, out a I list haven't. of Oh, yes. Amor Tolls. They Amor Tolls is on there. I know. Yeah. Gentlemen of Moscow. Um there was another contemporary. Maybe All the Light is also on there. Um, but anyway, wow. um, that they're doing that, like kind of the same thing, more than okay. 125 years, I can't say, but I could name my favorite books. Yeah, we, well, wait, maybe we should do that maybe for the new year, just kind of go it, maybe yeah. end out the year with that. That'd be fun. We'll end out the year with our favorites of all time. Um, okay, Amanda, are you next? Yes, you're up. Yes. Um, this is a book that... Uh, maybe Andrea would have talked about um, if she was here today, but this is Tiger Skin Rug by Joan Haig. This is a book from Europa Editions, and I, I'm pretty sure it's their first book that they published for middle grade readers. So it's for ages eight to 12. And uh, the story is two boys from India they, their family moves them to Scotland and they're very homesick and they don't like the rain. They don't like just the weirdness. It, it's so different in Scotland, obviously. And they especially think that the tiger skin rug in their creepy new house is very, very weird. And they just want to go home to India, uh, but they make friends with the neighbor next door and they all discover that there's something very, very strange about this tiger skin rug. And it comes to life and tells them that it will help them get home if they first help the tiger fulfill an old promise. So they go on this magic journey. It's a really quick read. I really liked it a lot. It, it's been a long time since I let myself read a middle grade book and I, and I enjoyed it. Um, a friend of Warwick's, a local author named Kim, Kim Dwinnell, uh, who recently did an event with us at La Jolla Rifford Library, she says, teeming with richly layered culture, tastes, smells, and sounds of Scotland, England, and India, and woven together with magic and wonder, Tiger Skin Rug had me captivated at every twist and turn. Um, so if you're looking for something for a younger reader on your list, this is Tiger Skin Rug. It's some solid magical realism for the kids in your life. What's and it? I, what's that age group? Is that like 10? Is that like eight a 10 year old? 12, eight to 12. Eight to 12. Eight to 12? Yeah. Okay. And it's got really cute little illustrations throughout as well, which I really miss and I wish more grown up books did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't remember who it was last week. I don't know if it was Andrea or who I was talking to recently, but I can't remember. Somebody did say you need to just take time and read a uh, middle grade and picture books once in a while, right? Because they really there's there's always there are always some good messages in them, and you know that this one actually made me remember a picture book called The Tiger Who Came to Tea. If anyone remembers that out there, and um. It kind of had the same uh, weird magical feeling as that picture book, if anyone yeah. remembers. Cool. All right, Tom. Well, first, first, I want to show you, as I was telling you, this was this is what's coming next summer. So this oh. is only one of them, but that's Black Panther. So it is a bigger, it's probably, it looks like it's going to be a bigger size than the normal Penguin Classic. Yeah. Um, but with a forward by, how do we say your name? Nettie Okorafor. You know, awesome. Yeah. So, um, yeah, those are going to be it. Those are going to be amazing. I know. I've never tried to read that name aloud. <laughs> me either. I've read it a million times. Yeah. I'm yeah. Sure don't I'm have me. Don't have me introduce people. <laughs> no. Okay. So my next book is like for the holidays, Power and Thrones, a new history of the Middle Ages by Dan Jones. And we've been publishing Dan Jones for maybe it seems like about ten years. British historian just one of the very best um i don't you know i don't think he does like he's a popular historian so he takes the scholarship and the research that you know more uh academic historians are doing and then writes really riveting popular histories um 
he, we've done the, he had the Crusaders, the Templars, and I think the, the first bestseller was the Plantagenets. Um, okay, and so, in, so yeah. in the power of power and thrones, it's the history of the Middle Ages, which, um, you know, the medieval world, which uh, we, I guess I was reading a review of this book and they talked about how we don't, we've traditionally called it the dark ages, but we really shouldn't because there was, um, you know, I guess it just depends on your perspective, what's the dark ages and what isn't. Um, but the medieval world, and, and he always makes connections with the present. I mean, the, the best popular historians, I think, do that. And so the medieval, the medieval world was forged by the big forces that still occupy us today, climate change, pandemic disease, of course, migration, mass migration, and technological revelations. So this is the time after the fall of Rome, um, you know, when uh, he says that this is when European nationalities, as we know them today, were formed, um, basic systems of law when governance were codified, and when the Christian church is matured as both powerful institu institutions and the regulators of Western public morality. Art, art, architecture, philosophical inquiry, and scientific invention, it's all here. Um, so if you're, if you're a history fan or you have a history fan on your list, um, definitely think this will be a, a perfect book. Power and Thrones by Dan Jones. Yeah, the Templars was really, I remember that one. And then the Plantagenists. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. He right. I mean, not like Eric Lord, but it's got that, that narrative nonfiction. It has yes. a narrative thing going for it. Yeah, because sure. he's a really good storyteller. So right. and that's what I want when I, and I haven't read this one, but I've read some of the others and they, he, yeah, he keeps you turning the pages while you're right. learning so much about a period that you may think you know something about, but really you don't. Really you don't, yeah. No, so that's, so if you have somebody who's an Eric Larson fan, yeah. And you need and you need something. This is a good segue. Yeah. To, that's, to that. that's a great that's a great suggestion. Yeah. yeah. All right, Kim. Okay. Just I totally want to read that. That was I, I, yeah. okay. I, know, that's why, I know that's why sitting here you should see all the post-its I have around my it's like, oh I read that I one. Oh, I want to read that one. <laughs> okay. Um continuing with my short story theme. Um this is these are essays so my next pick is ann patchett's latest these precious days um which is essays not actually short stories and this book is like flying out of warwick's i couldn't even get my hands on a copy um i mean a physical copy so ann patchett's new book these precious days is a collection of essays featuring a wide range of experiences from her magical and enviable life. Each piece is lovely and filled with warmth, wit, and emotion. Topics include her three fathers, the craft of writing, her year of no shopping, and Snoopy. I had forgotten that Snoopy is an aspiring writer and Padgett details the hilarious and valuable lessons she learned from him. This book is just delightful and I can't wait to give it to all of my friends. It makes the perfect gift. It's the perfect size, not too big. The cover is absolutely gorgeous and it is filled with Patchett's generous spirit and love. Sounds okay. good. It's gorgeous. I mean, you can't I, go wrong with this book. I'd forgotten about Snoopy too, but yeah, he was. Yeah, it's hilarious because it all comes back and you're like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh. And she's just, she's just so darn talented. I mean, she just has yeah. a, you know, I mean, the, the things that, I just love her. I love and, everything and about her. Everyone says she's the nicest person on the face of the earth and it comes out in her writing. On the know? planet. But she's like, but she's no nonsense though, too. I mean, she is, it's just like, yeah. she's just very, yeah. she cuts to the boat, you know, it's just yeah. like, she just cuts right through it, but it's just, is the absolute, but she's, I think it's her authenticity. You yeah. know what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. That, her candor. Her candor is, is that you just love about her. I mean, yeah. I love it. Yeah. Yes. So big. Hey. Um, Wade Lucas. Yes, Wade Lucas. Belcanto is one of the best. Wade, I love you should just why don't you just come on to the Zoom? This, he, well, he should just come in hot right now. Come on. I know, just this. come on in. Just come <laughs> pop yeah. on, pop yeah. on in with us. <laughs> All yeah. right, um, we're going to do lightning round because the, what I have to talk about isn't coming out until next year. And so it's just a teaser for you all. So let's just do our lightning round so you all can buy something now to buy for gifts or for yourself. So Amanda. 
Well, I'm also talking about something that comes out next year, which is really soon, y'all. I'm scared. Um, but okay, so I'm I'm probably one of the last booksellers on earth who has not read A Little Life by um, Hanya Yana Gahara. But I received a copy of her new book, yes, To Paradise. And I am just barely underway. It comes out January 11th, it looks like, um, give or take. We're, we're being generous these days with projected dates. Um, but I'm immediately in, this is exquisite writing. Uh, this is a novel spanning three centuries and three different versions of the American experiment. So there's an alternate version of 1893 America. There is 1993 Manhattan besieged by the AIDS epidemic and 2093 in a world riven by plagues and governed by totalitarian rule. And she wrote this before, she conceived of this before the current pandemic. So it's super fascinating. It's, I, I'm, 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 I can, I can, even though I haven't read A Little Life, I can say with much certainty that this is going to be just as big. So that's To Paradise. You can order it now for more. She is, I love, I mean, I've got to grab this other one here. Um, I have a, I have the bookshelf from, from like 2013 sitting next to me. She wrote, I read her when she came out oh. with the people in the, in the trees, uh -huh. which was the trippiest, but it was so good. So this was before A Little Life. Um, and I asked Todd at Doubleday if the new one was sort of in the vein of, of people in the trees. And he said, it's kind of a, she just well, keeps getting bigger both. and better and better. I mean, so I have a feeling you're right, Amanda, and that it's going to be another really big book. Definitely um, one of the most anticipated books of the beginning of the new year, I feel like. Yeah, I think so too. All right, so Wade's coming in because he just can't help himself. What? <laughs> good, good. So, <laughs> hey. so he just can't quite help himself. Awesome. Yeah. Watch him from, from the sidelines. Uh, so we'll let Wade pop in. What? There he is. Hi, Wade. <laughs> Hi, Wade. Hi, guys. So, so glad you could join us. I had an appointment earlier and I couldn't join, but <laughs> it finished early and uh, and oh you were God. you were stalking us on Facebook, so I was oh, like, totally. <laughs> "Well, I've done that before when I've had reports that are time sensitive. I'll like keep the tea times up in the background and you know do all that stuff." Because <laughs> we're but, very um, entertaining. We I do have to say, work. Kim, I'm so glad you're my Mick Heron buddy because that guy is insanely talented. And um, yeah. if anyone's a fan of audiobooks, I don't even know if it's our audiobook version sorry penguin random house but uh i read his first book slow horses so many years ago and um i've been listening to the audiobook version just to refresh myself and it's really good um and the show is coming out probably springish uh, the last i heard is around april but don't quote me on that because i'll probably get sued or something <laughs> but um but not only is the cast Gary Oldman, Kristen Scott Thomas, uh, Jonathan Price, uh, Bill Nye, who's oh, I love him. my all-time yeah, favorite actress. I love him. Um, it's insanely good. So uh, it's going to be a blockbuster. And you all heard it first from me, from Kim, from other presenters. Uh, you really got the inside scoop on that one. Yeah. And, uh, and I want to say for Ann Patchett, again, it's not my book, but uh, Bel Canto is one of my favorite books of all time. I, I have, when, you, when you come I, on. I have strong feelings about the end of that book. Well. Okay, hold those feelings. I haven't read, I haven't read, no I'm spoilers. Not gonna, <laughs> I'm no, not hold gonna, those feelings. I'm not going to say anything except I was very upset. But it's Let's a beautiful book. 
Let's have a spoiler session too. We'll do a oh, we'll do our favorites yeah. of all time. Ooh, and it's really okay a to spoil a book session. that's yeah. 25 years old or something. Yeah. Probably but okay. I also would love to do a spoiler session because sometimes those are fun too. Because I would like to spoil a little bit of perfume because it's just like holy shit. Oops. Hey, I'm in. <laughs> we knew it was coming. It's the lack of sleep. It's the lack of sleep. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Okay. I better stop. Okay, Tom, what's your lightning round? Okay, my lightning Wait, round. Wait, before before we get to you, Tom. Wade, all you get is a lightning round, so just pick okay. one book. So make it make it fine. make it a good one, Wade. Make it a good one, Wade. All right. <laughs> um, so mine is a paperback original out uh, this week, I think. Um, People from my neighborhood by Hiromi Kawakami. Uh, this is from Soft Skull Press, and it's one of the books we distribute. And I think she also we I think she also has a book uh, earlier book that we sold from Europa. Um, I can't remember what that was called, but I. But I read this over the weekend. It's easy. It, this is definitely a one sitting. You can see it's right. short and it fits in with Kim's short stories. These are short stories about a neighborhood in Japan that on some level feels very real and the characters seem real, although there's lots of magic. There's lots of surprise. Um, it's filled with, um, you know, really incredible flights of imagination just within a few pages. And each story is just a few pages. Um, the neighbors include the bossy child who lives near a tree, the chicken farmer. So there's definitely like a fairy tale thing going on. Grandpa Shadows, the diplomat fisherman, two girls named Yoko, bitter rivals. Um, so it's got a sense of humor. Um, I really loved it. And uh, perfect little stocking stuffer. You know, it's only it's a $15 paperback. Um, and Brian Washington, one of my favorite oh, yeah. Riverhead writers, says uh, the Kawakami reminds us of what a gift and a rarity it is to read her work. Her characters love, lose, grow, and fall, while Kawakami paints murals of their lives with the deftest of hands. The depth and complexity of these stories is simply beyond, and Kawakami's prose from cover to cover couldn't be a bigger joy to live with. So this is kind of a nice little sleeper surprise. I love uh, the cover. People from yeah. my neighborhood. Yeah, it's great. It's a really I just cool realized cover. that's the same author as the Nakano thrift shop. That's it. I that was the that was the Europa book. Yes. I loved, loved that book. So, so you good. need this one. You need this one, right? Uh, oh. yes. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. But that's the thing, like with Kim talking about the short stories and the essays and Tom, that's it's like I don't think people understand that it's actually probably harder to write those well. Oh, you yeah. know, yeah. to really get yeah. to really succinctly yeah. get the message across in fewer words. Yes, um, yes. So, and then, the, yeah. and then these very short, short stories, there is definitely like a magic to them that is hard to pull off. I might need that one too. Okay. Yeah. All right, Kim. What's yeah, that, your lightning that, round? That was already on my radar screen, uh, Tom. Yeah, I'm definitely reading that. Okay, my last book, it's not really short stories, I'm stretching it, but. Um, but really good um, food writers, when they write cookbooks, each recipe, you know, oh. is, has a little story above it. And also the first, you know, the introduction, the first couple of pages are also stories. And um, my next book is Baking with Dory. Oh. Sweet, salty, and simple. Um, Dory Greenspan is one of my favorite cookbook writers and her new cookbook, Baking with Dory, Sweet, Salty and Simple is a treat. It is filled with a wide array of mouthwatering recipes for both desserts and savory suppers, sides and breakfasts. Dory explains that these are the kinds of recipes she loves most. Recipes that are simple, rely on basic techniques and have deep flavors and complex textures. They are flexible too, with many of the recipes containing ideas for swapping ingredients, making them fancier, or preparing them more simply. Like Ina Garten, Dory's writing style is captivating and intimate, and her recipes are foolproof. With the holidays coming up, this book is full of new recipes to try, and it makes a wonderful gift. I love, I love her. It. She's great. That's, and I love that you included her as a story, like a storyteller as part of the-, the She really the, is. Yeah. I was just about to say, that's that's such an amazing idea that 
I mean, even even a recipe or a meal a meal itself could be thought of as a short story yeah. with yeah. so much yeah. so much behind it, but just a perfect little gem that you get in that moment. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, and I I love short stories. Um, around the holidays because they get so crazy you know between Halloween and New Year's it's like oh my god and I I love being able to just sit down and focus and do it and then you know pick up the next one later when you know my scattered brain has some time right and uh, in some I mean reading these collections I reminded me of how much I love short stories um I had forgotten honestly um, and how much of a punch they pack. Yeah. I mean, it's like, whoa, you don't forget them. Yeah. One of my favorites was Birds of a Lesser Paradise. Um, that was a few. She's got a new collection coming out and I can't wait. I can't remember who? who's publishing it. Who is uh, it? Meg. Oh, we'll have to look it up. I'll look it up while Wade's talking and then I'll tell you. Um, <laughs> oh, I, mean, and I, I will, I will listen, listen to, to Wade. I'll oh. be looking up other things while he's talking, so I won't be listening to Wade. <laughs> yeah, can I? I'll um, be commenting I, in the chat while Wade. Is I'll be so. commenting in the Facebook chat while Wade's talking. <laughs> yeah, be, before Wade talks, he corrected me. I'm so sorry. I the first Slow House book is not Slow House; it's Slow Horses. Oh gosh, I, was, um, I didn't mean to correct i just it was on yeah. my brain no no I no, no. i always book. um forget that and i've given it to i don't even know how many people i don't even have a copy because i just lend it out the second i get a new copy well the the thing about mick heron it's not only just this amazing british Brit, british british espionage uh, i combine those two words somehow um it's also he's funny too yeah. like he Super has this funny. clever like just little jabs he throws in there and it's fantastic. Okay, Birds of a Lesser Paradise was by Megan Mayhew Bergman and she's oh. got a new one coming out next spring. Um, so if you're looking for uh, um, another short story collection, it's, I love this short story collection. It's so good. Okay, so wow. I put the link, I put the link wow. in the comments okay. there. And okay, the new great. one's coming out, I think um, in like May, March maybe of next year. March. Yeah. March of next year. Okay. Okay, Thanks. Wade, your turn. Lightning round, buddy. Tom, I need your help on this one. Okay, I'll do my best. Oh, that yeah. sounds so good by it's Carlo the... Lolly Music. Oh, yeah. Uh, fantastic cookbook. Uh, Tom, take it away. Well, I'm going to be right back. You keep talking, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to okay. point out the recipe that we had last night. Hold on. So <laughs> I presented this uh, last week, and Tom turned off his camera ran to the kitchen, came back with his copy of this cookbook and was like, his wife, Anne, is this incredible cook and they've been using this book nonstop. Um, so a few recipes, and I know it's right before dinner time, but I'll just read you a couple titles. Uh, herbed rice, or herbed rice, as Mick Heron would probably say, um, with shrimp, kimchi, tomato sauce. Yum. Um, <clears throat> Low and slow spiced chicken with garlic crunch crumbs. And my favorite, because I've been looking for a recipe for a long time that uses this ingredient, um, spaghetti squash with melted cauliflower sauce. So what Carla Music does is she presents these recipes that are, they always have a unique twist to like everyday things you would make anyway. And she includes at the bottom of the recipe, kind of a Julia Child-esque, like if you change this ingredient or you could sub out this thing very easily. And it's so usable and wonderful. And she's a delight. I highly recommend her tea videos. Tom. Well, so this is, so this is, so Anne, my wife is a, she's a collector of cookbooks. She's a baker, she's a chef. She is very hard on cookbooks. If Especially if things don't work, she will be like, not happy. Really? So she's, made, she's yeah. made a few things out of this already, but the one she's already made, she's made this recipe, she's had it for like a week and a half or two weeks. She's made this recipe twice already. The gingery ground beef with lime and herbs. And it is Whoa. so good. So that good. Looks it, is, good. it is so good. Um, so what do you do? So what do you do with it? Like, do you put it in, do you put it in like, I don't know. 
it be, how, what do you, how do well, you, you eat serve it? it? You serve it, <laughs> you serve it with uh, lettuce, optional, but rice. It's okay. with rice. Okay, um, all right. And it is fantastic. And uh, there, she's made other things, but I, I was, I'm amazed that in two, in less than two weeks, she's made a recipe out of this twice already. Wow. Um, so it works and it's delicious. So I'm sure there are many more in here that are just like that. So this this is already my I'm not I'm not cooking, but this is my favorite cookbook of the. Holiday. You are you are the recipient of. I, can I knew Tom course. was going to do a better job than I would anyway. I love it. <laughs> okay, okay, I have to break in here. This is her cookbook from last year. I'd yeah. never heard of her before. I didn't um, know. Oh, okay. okay, it is fabulous. You can see all the stickers in it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this is like one of them. Uh, I mean, she's the bomb. I, I totally agree with everything you said. And uh, and also don't forget this one. It's fantastic. If right, you're out of one, maybe you can get the other one because those the cookbooks are another great gift. I mean, they are a fantastic. Yeah, it's a great really hostess are. gift to bring to somebody if you're going to a party or something. Yeah. I would say if you take the accessibility of Ina Garten and put a twist of David Chang, yeah. Yeah. That's she, yeah. She That's yeah. 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 I just love the presentation, the title, because yeah. we all know that feeling when you hear about something and that sounds so good. Um, right. Perfect. No, that yeah. one that, that Ann made twice. Um, I might have to be looking at that one too. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And all like, right. So what, uh, one of the things that we get to do, that's one of our favorite things to do is books that are coming out. Oh, yes. And so I would make everybody a little jealous because I got a copy of this and I read, I'm not a good flyer. So I flew this weekend and it takes a lot to like take my brain off of flying and read half of this on the way to Chicago. Um, Emma Straub at her best. It's good. It's so good. Uh, She's fantastic. Um, I just love her. And so this, but this isn't coming out till May. So sorry, everybody. Right. But, but it is going to be like, I'm, I, uh, I read it. Like I, I haven't seen, you have a physical version of this. I have not seen that, but with a note, with a note from Emma. Perfect. Perfect. Well, I don't need one of those, but you do. I do. Um, it makes the, good. She owns an independent bookstore. She's a bookseller. Too. Well, of course she is. She's awesome. Yeah, sorry. Well, and and, you is... know, there's a lot of authors that actually are books. There. There's more than you think that own right. bookstores. Um, but go but ahead. This, I, I love, I'm a maybe, I'm a, probably the same as you, maybe not quite halfway, but right. it's, um, it's her time travel book. But it's so filled with, but it doesn't, get, like I'm not a time, necessarily a time travel person. Right. Right. But it's so filled with emotion and um, and it's yeah. the 90s. I mean, right. I love it. It's so good. And I'm it's so just, is, I mean, it. kind of an homage to her dad. I mean, there's just so yeah. much that's, that's in play in this. But in her, you can just feel her in this book. Yeah, know? more, I feel like more than any of her other books. Yeah. More, more her. I, and she wrote it apparently during, you know, in a, in a rush during the pandemic when her dad was ill right um with the yeah. with the with the covid i guess so right so oh, anyways so yeah. it. no it's so good so it was one of those where i was just like okay this is getting me through so not to make you jealous out there but just look for this in may It'll never too early to pre-order you know, booksellers get early copies of things all the time. A little <laughs> perk of the job. It's a yep. little perk. One of those little, you know, we may not be making millions, but we're reading some great books. <laughs> it's like, it's like Sophie's about. Choice when I get, and sorry for the reference, but, you know, we'll have a new David Mitchell or something, or like for you, Tom, like Amor Tolls, oh, and yeah. you're like, I only have so many. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Them. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, it problems. is. Oh, for yeah. sure. It's a Sophie's choice. I mean, it's kind yeah. of like, it's, that's kind this of a sick what... comparison, but you're right. It is a little bit. <laughs> I know. I... <laughs> right. But it is kind of. <laughs> Am I your favorite? What have, I, what, have I done, what have I done? What have I done for you lately? <laughs> How's well, that's why it actually makes me happy that you have a copy so that I won't send you one when I right. get my very. Then you, email. then you can pick another Sophie. Yeah, or, <laughs> oh. I guess it's. But but, her, you, but but it works both ways because you know I would have picked you, Julie, but I don't have to. You don't have to now. <laughs> exactly. Julie's on the VIP list at every. I love show. it. So well, Amanda. because I actually read them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's a, 
that's one of those and Kim, things. you were on Soho Crimes list because of Mick Heron. So Oh good. Okay. I put you on there. Oh, I fantastic. Love I love Soho Crime. Okay. Oh, they're so good. They're so All right, good. everybody. That was a good. I'm just going to I'm going to give Facebook a break. We can still chat after, but um okay. Okay. everybody, it was so great. I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving well, I, out there. Go what? What do Julie, I Julie, one thing I want to say is yeah. I love the idea of a greatest hits kind of over yeah. the last 20, 30, 40 yeah. <clears throat> Julie, uh, 60 years. <laughs> 60. Wait, wait. Um, Can you see the gray? Yeah, I'm going next year. Whatever, whatever our book selling career. I think we should do is. like a top five, or I guess we do top three yeah. favorite books. I of think all we time. We're, yeah, we're going to we do it. We're going to do it, it, but it's going to be hard. It's going to be really hard to do. It's so freaking hard. Yeah. yeah. That's I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, we might need to do, here's what we maybe need to do, Amanda. And we'll just, we're riffing now and then we need to let people go. Um, we can present like our top three, but maybe we can put somewhere on the tea oh, time good. list on the website, like our top 10. We can do like a Like each page. person can have like, yeah. they have their top 10. Maybe we can and, do something like that. And just a, and just a plug, we're doing a, a rep picks for Mission Viejo Library where yeah. Warwick's is selling the books. Uh, online on and, uh, uh, Thursday. That's not that's not going to be broadcasted though, right? That's an in-person thing. No, correct? it's going to be an in-person event. Okay. But if you live in Orange County, we'll be at Mission Viejo Library on Thursday. Sales go to Warwick's. Right. So we're there. And then we've got yeah. Okay. Well, if you're going to plug Mission Viejo, I'm going to plug our events that are happening at the store then. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Why not? <laughs> so we're Matt, Matt, Matt Coyle. Break, but no. No, we're not giving him a break. We're just going to keep talking. Matt Coyle will be um, with us. To, oh, so he leaves? So he so he, he, he just leaves mic. us. He literally dropped the mic. He yeah. literally dropped oh, the there mic. there he is. No, I meant to mute. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> I was like, wow, really? <laughs> if you want to see Wade, it's going to be in person, and that's it. And then I, it's like, God. And then as soon as I start talking about, well, I'm going to talk about my events, he's like, okay, peace <laughs> out. I'm not listening to that. <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, so we have Matt Coyle will be at the store tomorrow night. And we have a really fun one on Wednesday with Kimmery Martin. She's going to be with Michelle Gable and Susan Meisner and Christina McMorris. And that will be really fun. And then Wade, Brene Brown's big one is on Thursday. Ooh. So we still got tickets for that. So um, Amanda, I'll put this all in the tea time. But thank you everybody for sticking with us. We kind of jabbered a little bit today, but um, have a good week. And we'll see everybody next week. Same fat channel. Thank you, everyone. Hi. Thank you for letting me crash. Thanks, bud. Thanks for coming. All right. Let me.